And thank you for joining me in the studio and painting away the stress of everyday life. Now, I don't know about the stress of everyday life today, but um, I, was made, I, I had a challenge thrown at me yesterday by email. Um, can you paint a painting without using a paintbrush? And don't forget to click subscribe. <laughs> well, let's see what we can do. As you can see, the palette's a complete mess. As I said, I'm totally unprepared. So I've got a little bit of uh, burnt umber there. I've been, been making another lesson. I've got a little bit of green, a yellow, yellow ochre. I'm going to put a little bit of um, vermilion on my palette. Um, or you can use cadmium red. That just happens to be the red I picked up. Um... And we need a couple of different blues. Let's have a little of Ceylon blue. There we go. Cerulean blue, I should say. I call it Ceylon blue. But it's Cerulean. I got um, a little bit of ultramarine blue. There we go. That's all I'll need. And, um, okay, so I've taken the liberty of sketching this out. This was actually drawn um, from my Patreon page. Um, and if you want to pop along and look at that, you can. Um, for as little as dollars a month, you can join my Patreon. As you know, this is a public-funded um, site. Or well, that is a public-funded site, I should say. Um, this is totally free. Yes. So I'm going to I'm gonna start off with a sponge today. I'm going to start off with a damp sponge. i tell you what I should put on my palette is a little bit of white. Let's put a little bit of white on my palette. There we go. And we'll just go through the colours. I have no point telling you what brushes I'm using because I'm not using any today. I'm just going to pick up some titanium white. Um, let me think. A bit of Ceylon blue. Cerulean blue. Ceylon blue. Cerulean blue. And let's just put some sky in place like this. Try not to go over my painting too much. No, I'm not allowed to use a brush. I'm not allowed to use a brush today. So I'm going to... I'm not allowed to use a brush. No, this is not as going to be as easy as I think it's going to be. But i got a couple of ideas up my sleeve, I think. All right, let's put, a, let's put a little bit more white over this side. There we go. And let's just... Smooth that in there like that. Using the edge of the spell you can do this with the kids, this is fun. There you go. I was gonna paint a draft today. Um I've been thinking about painting a draft for a while but it's not the way I was expecting to paint a draft, so I'm just plodding in just a couple of swirly marks like this. There you go. Just using the, the sponge to its best effect, I think. Getting some sort of a, a warm sky area. Let's mix some blue down there. Limited paints with no brushes, that's, what, that's the idea. There's a challenge for you. Let's get a little bit of vermilion now. Let's get a little bit of vermilion with a little bit of blue. I want to make a purpley colour. More on the red side. Let's see. Bit of white, bit of white, bit of white, bit of white. Bit of white in, bleed that white in like that. Try and get that speckle effect. There you go. We got some purple there. I get a little bit of green now. Oh no, same sponge. I'm, I'm not cleaning my sponge. <laughs> I hope this is looking all right. Yes, I've absolutely no idea 
what this is going to look like. So I'm going to put a few tree patterns there like that. That's going to offset that purple. There we go. Let's put a little bit of darker green. This, this green I got on my palette. There you go. I was doing a bit of work on my Thomas Gainsborough painting. And uh, I thought, and if you don't know what that is, pop along. Have a look in the iCards. And Jason and I have been painting this Thomas Gainsborough uh, painting for quite a while. There we are, that'll do. Let's put a few little bits of grass or something. I don't know. Look like the Serengeti. Let's put a sponge in the water. I don't want it to dry. Now, um, now I got to mix some branches, haven't I? I can't use a, I can't use a brush. So I'm going to use a, a coffee stick. <laughs> coffee stick. Yes. Can we do something with a coffee stick? I, th I think we can. Certainly get some branches in like this. There we go. Not as good as I thought. But it looks like a trunk, doesn't it? With some bark on it. I'll tell you what we could do. I'll tell you what we could do. If I snap this brush and just do the edge like that, we can get some branches coming out. So just bra just do that and then just lay that on like that. It just looks as if there's a few branches coming out. Chuck it in the pot. Wipe your fingers clean. There you go. Oh, that's a good idea. We can, before that dries, we can put some grass there like that. There you go. And there's a little white one. Just catching a bit of light, that one is. There you go. Okay, so that's that done. Now, we've got to think of... Um, <laughs> we've got to think of this now, haven't we? Um, what can I use for this? Um, i tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to use a, a toothbrush. <laughs> toothbrush, yes. Nice dry toothbrush. So we got our tutty brush, um, and I haven't wet it, and I think I just I thought I'd just go in straight. I'm going to pick up a bit of bit of burnt umber, a bit of yellow ochre. This is just a fun painting, but it's 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 just it's just a bit of fun today. And let's put in some I want this to look Like as if it's definitely um, got some hair or something. Because yeah, they are. They have got quite a lot of. They are quite furry things. Well, not really furry, but there's definitely some fur on them. So they're not flat. So I'm trying to say, this is a good way to have a, make it look a bit rougher, there we go, we can put a little bit more light in this later on, it's not as easy as I thought, let's put a little bit of white on our brush and What you're doing is you're dragging texture um, with the brush. You're actually dragging more texture in. This is, <laughs> is going to be fun. <laughs> I've never used a toothbrush to paint with before. We got his neck coming down there like that. I hope you can see that texture type of 
fur effect I'm getting. I hope you can. He's going to come out a bit more like that, I think. This is his neck and his back's going down there. Now the reason I'm doing this, 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 this is twofold. I always do things for a reason uh, in the studio. Besides from trying to paint away the stress of everyday life, I think if you can do a painting or do a anything really if you if you can do something with materials that you're not used to using or say you went to oils instead of acrylics or you went, tried watercolors or you tried a brush or you tried doing paintings with toothbrushes and stuff and you get a, a result then just think how amazing you can be just think how amazing you can be if you had the right equipment wow there's some there's food for thought for you there's food for thought and the kids love this and you don't have to buy expensive brushes and and stuff for children to enjoy themselves you know i've had hours and hours of fun with my grandchildren just by doing things like this and it's just it just takes a little bit of let me just get this up here just takes a little bit of imagination sometimes just to do that Okay, so let's get some burnt umber. I'm going to have to put some more burnt umber on my palette in a minute. And let's put in his... But I'm going to put a bit more burnt umber on my palette. One second while I do that. I'm just going to mix a little... I'm going to put a little bit of black on my palette. Just a touch, just a touch, just a touch. I just want to darken my burned umber up. Or you can use Van Dyke Brown, it's entirely up to you. Okay, let's put these. If this doesn't work, there's another way we can do it. But I, I want to put these patches in. And this way, <coughs> excuse me, this way, you're not going to be too precise. It's going to be more free. And this is what you want sometimes to break that. Sometimes to break that um, accuracy you, you can develop through painting with a brush. You sometimes we are a little bit too precise. And all we're trying to do here is give a representation of some patches that these wonderful giraffes have got. And what it is, it's to break their outline. So when they're standing up against the tree and a lion is running around and he looks in the distance, the, 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 it's camouflage, basically. That's all this is, camouflage. And I, it just breaks their shape up against the, against the sky. And it's quite effective in actual fact and you can put these shapes in any way you want or any shape you want as long as they look giraffe like it doesn't really matter does it oh we're looking it's looking pretty good i think i hope so <laughs> okay so we need to bring some up like this because that's going to represent his um his mane i think is a mane they call it a mane i don't know do they Perhaps they do, perhaps they don't. But in this particular case, in Wales, it's a mane. There we go. And it's curling over there and it's coming back up. Goes down to about there like that. There we go. Looks through like. Merge that in like that. Put a couple of small spots in. There you go. Oops, now we can't use a brush. Let's get that off there with a Q-tip. We can correct that in a second. Okay, so let's put that in there like that. Is that there? 
Now with the fun part, now with the fun part, let's get a little bit more yellow yoker because his head's going to be a bit lighter up here. Uh, his eye is there, so let's work. There, let's put a bit of white, get some white in his ear. Get a bit of yellow ochre. Let's do the back of that. We need a bit of contrast in there in a second. We've got to put some shadows in here now. That's just two little horn like things there. That's going to come down there. Think of shape and form. Think of shape and form. We want a little bit more. If your toothbrush is getting, if your toothbrush is it's a number six toothbrush, if you're getting, your toothbrush is getting a bit thick with paint, take some off. Yes. Um, <laughs> let's put some shadow in around you. Like that now. He's got his eye there and another little shape there let's put a bit of shadow in his ear I mean, let's get this let's get this color right let's get a bit scrubble it now scrubble it like this though like as if you're cleaning your teeth getting that rounded shape there looking like something okay so I'm gonna put my toothbrush in my water and now I'm gonna pick up um, a couple of q-tips a couple of q-tips and let me just adjust my, my mic's gone funny My mic fell off my ear. I got a I got a clippy mic on my ear and it fell off. So I'm picking up some Q tips. Yes, you've seen lots of paintings with these things, haven't you? Lately. And I thought, well, I use I use Q tips quite a lot in um, in the studio when I'm blending and portraits and things. So I thought, well, let's just use the Q tips in that way today because that just shows that you can use a multitude of things, not just brushes. Um, in the studio uh, you don't need to use brushes for blending you if you're using fine detail you can you can get some wonderful blends with with q-tips and things or cotton buds as they call them in certain parts of the country or world and uh, they're not just for cleaning out your ears now i don't condone you putting these in your ears cleaning wax out my father used to say to me and my mother used to say to me don't put anything bigger in your ear than your elbow yes because you can push that wax right back down into the, the the ear canal and trust me that is not pleasant when you've got to go and get your ears syringed and if the national health service in your country is like britain now we've got to pay for our own ears to be syringed which is ridiculous actually ridiculous oh. Okay, Jeff, the giraffe is coming on. Re Jeff, hello, Jeff. Hello, Clive. Yes. And what have you been doing today, Jeff? Well, I've been walking around the Serengeti, and uh, I can see your lips moving. Yes, I know my lips are moving. <laughs> okay, so let's put a little bit of white around. Yeah, no, like that. Make some marks. Uh, we can chuck that Q-tip in the bin. Pick up another Q-tip. Go into some black, uh, um, black and um, burned umber. There we are, black and burned umber. Let's put some 
marks on his little suit of marks like that, which are representing his camouflage. We call them camouflage marks. There we are. We put one just under his eye there, like that. And we need to bring his mouth down there. Mouth, my mouth. Hello, Clive. How are you? I'm doing pretty well here today. I'm out in the Serengeti and I was being munching on some leaves. There we go. <laughs> it's looking pretty good. Yes, let's get a bit more black. I've run out of black. There we go. I'll get some more mild black too. I've got to go to Hobbycraft today so I can pick up some of that in Hobbycraft. In actual fact, I need to check my paint stock. Let's just put a Let's just put his little eye there and another little eye there like that. We'll put his bit of shadow in his nostrils. There we go. And we'll put his bottom lip in because he's mentioning some. He mentioned. I know we could put. I tell you what we could do, couldn't we? We could. We could. Let's get this. Let's get this one. And we could put some. leaves like as if he's been munching on some trees there we'll get a little dot of white paint and just just put a little indication of an eye maybe there well we can check out another cotton bird or we can go in some blue now if we want to go into some blue um let's get a little bit of moisture on that blue and we can just tighten up around the edges like this. There we go. That eye's looking a bit weird there. There you go, that's better. How's that look? How's that look? I'm looking at my camera. I'll be alright. <laughs> we could put some whew, we could put some fluffy clouds in. I'm in trouble painting in clouds. Use a cotton bud. I'm in trouble painting clouds. Use a cotton bud. There we are. How, was that? How was easy was that cloud? Huh? How easy was that cloud? Let's put another cloud in. Just drifting away there like that. So just get your cotton bud and push your cotton bud in like that. Get a little bit of um, shadow colour. In this case I'm just using a little bit of blue. And I'm just going to lightly, lightly blend our bit of shadow colour in like that. Get a bit more white and then put a bit more white in front of that one. There you are. So if you're having trouble making clouds, try practicing with a Q-tip until you get them shapes you're looking for. How's that? There we are. Yes, he's looking a bit rough, but I think we got away with it. I think I hope we have anyway. <laughs> we can put a bit more highlight on him. I tell you what we haven't done. We haven't done is He's got a little lump there on the top of his head, where the, where there's another horn, I think. Let's just put that down there like that. I'm just getting to look a little bit more giraffe-like. Just mix his paint around. There you go. How was that? Is that okay? I think that's pretty good. I think for the day's lesson today, um, I think we we're doing pretty well there. Let's get a little bit of black on the tip. And just put a little bird flying around in the background because can't have a landscape without a bird. How was that? Very quick, easy painting using a sponge, a toothbrush, some Q chips, yes, some Q chips, and um, just a, a stirring stick that you'll find in a um, coffee shop. So have fun with the kids, that's what I would do. Have fun with the kids and paint away the stress of everyday life here in Wales with me, and I'll see you in the next time. Nice. Welcome, thanks for stopping by. It's time to learn with our friend Clive. So grab your brush, have a great time. And don't forget to click subscribe. Visit Clive5R.co.uk.